Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day. I hope it is a very thankful Thursday for you as God moves in our hearts and as he shows us the way that he has for us to go. And I'm excited about uh, being back with you next Sunday. Uh, so I look forward to that. We're going to be having uh, the Lord's Supper in the morning and we'll have business meeting in the evening. So Make plans to be with us. But right now, turn with me to Romans chapter 4. And we're going to continue along this line of what we've been talking about. And Paul is trying to get this point across. He's, he's hitting it hard over and over again, which is his way. Uh, the Old Testament tells us the best way to teach is line upon line, precept upon precept. And that's what he's doing. He's giving us all of these different illustrations as to why salvation is by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Not of works, lest any man should boast, uh, because no matter when this, what period of history we look at in the church, from the very early church until today, uh, we are fighting this battle. People have this idea, I got to do something to earn my salvation. I got to be something to earn my salvation. And the only thing that you have to do is accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. The only thing you have to be is an uh, an humble, obedient servant who says, yes, Lord, I accept the gift that you've given me. That's it. And that's what Paul's talking about. Because back in his day, he had these uh, Jewish Christians who were teaching that you had to get circumcised and do all these other things to, to truly be a Christian. So in verse 11, he says, uh, talking about Abraham, he says, he received the sign of circumcision, the seal of his, the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised. So obviously, since Abraham was accepted as righteous before he was circumcised, circumcision is not what does it, okay? Got it? That he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised. So just like Abraham, who uh, is accepted into uh, the family of God by his faith in him without doing anything to earn it, so too are we who trust in Jesus Christ. And uh, then he says, though they are under, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. Same way that, that Abraham was counted as righteous by faith, we are counted as righteous by faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, but who also walk in the steps of the faith, which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. So get this, for those Jewish men who had been circumcised, and if they trusted in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of their life, guess what? They're saved. They're part of the family. Those who have never been circumcised, who have never followed the law, but who have trusted in, faith, in Jesus Christ through faith, they're saved. No question about it. Jew, Gentile, doesn't matter. Black, white, doesn't matter. Rich, poor, doesn't matter. All that matters is we come humbly to the Father and accept the gift that he's offered us. I mean, can you imagine... For example, somebody comes along and they say, hey, I got a million dollars I want to give you. How would you respond to that? I mean, no strings attached, just want to give you a million dollars. Well, most of us would accept that, right? Now, for those who would say, uh, no, sorry, I don't want your money, uh, you, you might look at them a little funny. They might be a little bit uh, crazy, and the person whose gift they're rejecting might be offended by that. Listen. The father is offended by those who refuse to accept the gift of his grace. And the last thing you want to do is to offend the father of all creation. Think about that. Now, look at verse 13. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. See, when, when, when God called Abram out of Ur of the Chaldees and promised to, to make him the father of a great nation, understand it was not about the law. The law had not been given yet. The law had not been given at Sinai. The law would not be given for another five, six hundred years. Understand that. Get that in, in, into to our brains. Uh, for if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect because the law brings about wrath. For where there is no law, there's no transgression. Now see, this is where Paul starts to get a little bit convoluted and it can be kind of uh, confusing here. But what he's talking about here is we're made heirs of the kingdom through faith, not of the law. Now, get this. Faith is made void and the promise is made of no effect if we are heirs by the law. In other words, there was no reason for Jesus to die. 
If we could get saved by our efforts, by our works, by following the law, then Jesus died for no reason and God is it, just sacrificed his son for nothing. Well, I'm gonna tell you, he didn't do that. He sacrificed his son for you and for me because this is the only way that we can find forgiveness of sin and experience eternity in heaven. I want you to think about that. We'll be back here tomorrow to finish this up. So you be blessed and I'll see you then.